amazing meeting planned for you. We are going to have a, a series of prepared speeches. We're going to have a table topics session and then not forgetting our very own evaluation session. We, before we continue, I'd like to read out our club mission because this is what, this is the guiding principle on, on which we, we, we operate as a Toastmasters club. And please permit me to read this club mission. And it says, we provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. So there are a few words in there. We have communication in the leadership, self-confidence, and personal growth. These are very important to us, and we are going to train and grow this muscle as we do everything we meet on Sundays. Before proceeding, I would like to call on you all to observe some housekeeping rules. First among them is your microphones. Usually people come in and leave their micros, my, microphones on and it distracts whoever is delivering a speech or delivering a role. And people spend a lot of time to prepare for these meetings. It wouldn't be fair for such obstructions to, to ruin their, their, their presentation. So let's keep note of that. If you can put on your, your video, that would be great. If not, this is fine. We, I would like to move the meeting on by introducing a very important person to every Toastmasters meeting. And this, this person is what we call the Toastmaster of the day. In other meetings outside of Toastmasters, I would have been calling him, the, him or her the MC. But here in our circles, we refer to the person as a Toastmaster of the day. And he's, he or she is essentially supposed to guide us through the meeting and make sure that everything that we have planned on the day is delivered at a, at a certain quality. And I'm glad to introduce our very own Nana Yao. Nana Yao, Nana Yao is the, she's, she's, she's such an amazing lady. She's not only the Vice President Membership of Busy Speakers Toastmasters Club, She's also vice president membership for Airport Toastmasters, and I'm very glad to have seen her name in the program today because she always brings a lot of value to our meeting. So I'd like to call on and welcome Nanaya as she takes over the role as Toastmaster of the day. Thank you. Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters. Thank you for accepting me to be your Toastmaster for the day. I promise we're going to have an exciting program today. Our theme for today is cultivating your imagination. And this is a follow-up of our last meeting, which was Together We Grow. Together We Learn to Grow. As, fellow, as Toastmasters, we are encouraging each and every one of us to have big dreams and cultivate some imaginations to bear some fruits. William Blake once said, what is now proved was once only imagined. So whatever that we need to do now, we should always know that something that's we have imagined and we, it would definitely come to bear. For today, as part of our program, we will be hearing from three prepared speeches and as usual, we'll also have some table topic sections. We'll also have a time for presentation of awards and um, eventually bring our, our program to an end. For me to be able to have this program successful, I will be working with a group of people and I would like to invite our general evaluator who would also introduce a team that you'll be working with. And Isaac and Nana Kwabna Poku is going to be our general evaluator for the day and as we all know, he is going to evaluate how the meeting is going to run from the beginning to the end. 
Isaac, if we can hear for you, we would appreciate it. If you can let us know what your role for today's meeting will be. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Greetings to all fellow Toastmasters and guests. The purpose of my role as a general evaluator is to, is to evaluate everything that's going to take place through the meeting and during the meeting. So I'm making notes on everything that happens and doesn't happen. So I'll evaluate each participant on the meeting program and look forward for good examples of operation, organization, every enthusiasm, observation, and performance of duty. At the end of the meeting, I'll give my report. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Isaac. And um, can we also hear from Akosia, if you can, uh, Akosia GP and uh, Sheila, who will be the timer and the Gaimerian for the day, if we can also know more about their rules. So Akosia, can we hear from you, please? Yes, Naya. Good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon, Akosia. Okay, and then... Grammarian for today's program. My responsibility is to pay attention to all speakers, listen carefully to the language usage, and take note of any improper language, as well as any outstanding use of words, quotes, or sayings. It is also my responsibility to introduce the word of the day. In the word of the day for the meeting, is enthralling, enthralling, which means capturing and holding one's attention. Carl, can you please display it on the screen if you are ready? An example of using the word in the sen in the sentence. Is a long tourist begged in the sun as he lost himself in what must have been an enthralling book. Another example of the use of enthralling in a sentence is although the game was a low scoring encounter, it was still thoroughly enthralling. I encourage all speakers to make use of the word of the day today as we deliver our speeches. I will also double as the R counter for today's program. And my responsibility is to take note of the use of filler words or crutch. For example, Words such as are, ah, mm, ah, well, so, like, would be taking note of. And at the end of the program, I'll give a report on how each one of us did the use of their words. Thank you, Madam. Thank you very much, Akusia. Can we finally hear from Shira, the timer for the day? Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Um, just to clarify, please, can everyone hear me? My network is pretty bad. I just want to check in. Yes, we can hear you. Awesome. So as a timer, uh, my role is to make sure that every speaker speaks within the allotted time slot and the whole meeting is being run on time. And I'll be doing so by using three cue cards. I will show a green card when you hit your minimum time, when you've spoken in your minimum time. And then I'll show a yellow card when you've hit your target mark. 
and also show um, a red card when you reach the end of your allotted time. Um, example, for tables, topics, um, the allotted time is two minutes. So I'll be showing a green card when the speaker has spoken for one minute and then show a yellow card when the speaker has spoken for a minute and a half and a red card when the person hits two minutes. After the speeches, I'll come back and report on, how, on the time that each speaker spoke. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sheila. On that note, we're going to start with our prepared speeches. And as I have already indicated, for today, we're going to hear from three prepared speeches. And the first person on the, on the list is Maureen Ingozi Chukura. Maureen is currently the VPM of Busy Toastmasters, Busy Speakers Toastmasters, and Airport Toastmasters Club. She loves to travel and is hopeful that things will get better very soon. Maureen will be delivering a speech with the Q&A section as part of her project level, um, level four, project three on innovative planning. May we appreciate Maureen as she joins us to have her Q&A section project. Thank you, Maureen. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, Nanaya. Good evening, everyone. Good evening to all our guests joining in today. Just like the postmaster indicated, this is a Q&A session. Is I indulge us to drop a comment or questions in the chat box, or when at the point when it's time to have the Q&A session. But let's try to make it as interactive as possible. I love food. I don't know if you do, Nanaya. Do you love food as well? I really do. That keeps <laughs> us going. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. In fact, recently I had this very innovative idea. I was going to transfer making food seedling from a container to an actual farmland. But don't ask me if I actually did that. It's agricultural for me. I would say that having gone to school and done agriculture in secondary school, I, I would think that that would be all that it is to agriculture. But little did I know that I had a lot more to do than just staying in class and reading theories. For me, I would say that the only thing I can remember now from all that I was taught in secondary school is probably the Land Use Decree Act of 1978. I'm, I'm curious to know what you remember from agriculture. Nana, did you do agriculture in school? Um, that was in the junior high school. <laughs> <laughs> what do you remember? <laughs> uh, I remember, I think, you hear something transplanting. Uh, <laughs> and I have seen everything I learned. <laughs> Interesting. A man Did you do agriculture in school? Yes, I did. And I remember <laughs> one of the problems of agric in Ghana was post harvest lost. And I always say that absolutely not having been able to solve it. It's still the same from the lens that has killed. Okay, let's get right into the meat of today's conversation. The United Nations has these sustainable development goals that are targeted towards agriculture, mainly the goal two and goal 12. Goal two addresses zero hunger, and goal 12 talks about responsible production and consumption as well. However, these goals are have different targets and indicators that should that speak main, mainly to agriculture at some point. The goal 12 in particular talks about the target on sustainable consumption and production patterns directions and the use of our natural resources in such a way that they, there's no waste at either the retail and consumer levels, just like Emmanuel has pointed out. And of course, the goal two that talks on zero hunger targets on ending hunger to its barest minimum 
by achieving food security on a large scale and improving nutrition by promoting sustainable agriculture. Very ambitious, right? However, I'm not sure if at this point we're able to achieve it. I'm sure most of us are familiar with Agenda 2030 that half the time is shown around the room in certain walks of life. And 2030 is just 10 years away or even less from now. And there are certain studies that say that malnutrition on its own cannot even be achieved by 2030. And then it keeps me wondering, like, what exactly are we doing to make this happen? If we say 2020, 2030 is the agenda by which we bring all of these goals to fulfillment. In that light, I would want to say that Africa on its own, we're like heavy importers. We import almost everything. <laughs> Ghana imports about 440,000 tons of tomatoes every year. And this is not even enough to cater for the whole population, that we still have to import about 100,000 tons of tomatoes, which is what is accounted for by the government, because it's been studied that certain quantities of this importation actually come into the country informally that's unable to even account for them in terms of numbers. And then that's the gap in data that we have now. And then you're wondering, how do we achieve all of this? How do we achieve food security by 2030? There's a lot of attributes that, or problems or challenges that are currently being faced, such as the population growth of the country, which is a huge basis for why you would have this amount of production that is not able to cater for the needs of the people, or the low sanitation of production of productivity in agriculture, policy distortion by government. Sometimes you have a new government coming to play who is not really okay with what his successor has done. And then there's a big distribution in terms of produce, like Emmanuel Macri said, there's poor infrastructure and lights, or sometimes because agriculture has been made to look like a manual form of farming, and then young people like you and I do see it as a very lucrative business that they should go into. And farming on its own has other issues in terms of when you even get the seedlings, how sure are you that they are viable, that they would be able to grow, and the fertilizer that you have will be able to sustain them to the time when it's time for production. Let's take, for instance, granite that's takes about four to five years, four to five months sorry, to yield. And if you don't have the right seedling, you end up finding out that you as a farmer would have a very poor yield. You're not able to sustain yourself in to livelihood for you. How can we help as young people? That's where agri -technology, agricultural technology comes into play. Agri technology simply means you as a farmer and you as an investor meet halfway and then everybody, it's a win-win situation. In the sense that we can actually drive food security in Africa because you can have a farmer who's willing to get you as an investor on board and you who is the investor willing to meet the farmer and support his farmland. And how does this happen? In Nigeria now, I know that during the lockdown of that, there's been a whole lot of technology programs or apps that have come up. And they work in such a way that you have a farmer who is in some land that, let's use Ghana, for instance, is in Tamale. And you really cannot go to Tamale. But you have a, the farmer who is in Tamale who probably has the land or has access to a land that is on lease, but you as the investor cannot go to Tamale, but you're interested in making sure that the food security in the country, because we're all trying to achieve Agenda 30, 2030 in terms of food security, you can invest in this farmland and then you get your returns on your investment. 
It simply works in such a way that the farmer is able to scale up in, in his farm produce and, of course, find better means in terms of mechanized way of farming and equipment or transportation system, which is most times the problem that they always face. So he's able to get your monies and invest in his farm, getting more seed, seedlings and planting more and getting more laborers or hands on deck or machines that can help him to increase his yield. And you as the investor sitting down somewhere has invested in this land and at the end of, this, of the harvest period, he goes to the market or takes the produce to the market and he's able to sell off and get you money back as profits. So it's a win-win situation for both you as the investor and the farmer himself who has the land in somewhere in Tamale. In terms of food security and expanding and all of that, I think that that's the only way that we as young people can actually help because the UN is just a body. We as young people can act as local actors to make sure that by the year 2030, we're able to achieve this goal together as one people and one nation. So in terms of agri-technology, like I said, there's always going to be ups and downs because sometimes you're not sure whether the farms are actually there or someone is lying to you about it. But there's certain middlemen who come into the picture, who become the insurer or the farm manager. That's where the bridge between agriculture and you as an investor comes into play. So this middleman who acts as the farm manager brings you as the investor on this application and brings the farmer on this application to where you're able to see what's going on on your farm through an app, like your regular app, maybe Microsoft Team and stuff like that. And then you're able to see what's going on on your farmland. And at the end of the month, you're sure that you're getting your investment money back or your capital. There are things that you should always look out for in terms of deal breakers, which could be doing your due diligence to be sure that the land actually does exist ensuring that the land is actually insured by an insurance company so that in the case of a drought, a pest attack, or even swine flu, if you, if the farm has pigs and stuff like that, that your money or your capital is insured. And at the end of the day, you're going to get your money regardless of whatever happens. So, so those are some of the deal breakers I always look out for when it comes to agri agricultural technology apps. I don't know what your take is. I open the floor now for questions and answers, and we can take it up. Thank you. Question and answers. Hello. Is anyone there? Hello. Yes. Any question? I have a couple of long minutes. <laughs> Your question is welcome. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Now that's it. Okay, so there, there's a lot of tech around uh, agri tech, or there's a lot of tech around agriculture and how we can improve. Um, the whole value chain and, and, and get the best out of our lands and our efforts as a country. But I'm just wondering how we can, as a, as a country, develop our own tech, void of any cut and paste from other places in the world. Because what I've seen is that there's a lot of duplication of efforts locally trying to mimic some innovations that are happening in other countries in Ghana, and they have failed uh, massively. So I'm just wondering how, in your opinion, how we can stimulate the local economy to be the drivers of innovation rather than dragging and dropping in Ghana? Sure, uh, absolutely. Thank you, Emmanuel, for asking that question. First, I, I would like to say, like with every other business, I, the question in my mind would be why do we want to achieve this and how important is it for the people? 
In, in terms of technology coming into the picture, which is the new future of everything in every spell that right now, it will be how do we produce something that it is always on demand for the people and reach that gap that we don't have to import so much of it. Because in importation, then it means that the people in the country would totally be reliant. And, and COVID really just opened our eyes to a whole lot of this because a whole lot of our, our items or products are being imported. But how do we limit importation and then give jobs to people who are on ground who can actually drive the force of production and making sure that they have the technology so that it's not just really producing imitations, but producing real products that can actually stand out in any market. And of course, making them very good for exportation too as well. So if I don't know if I answered your question, but in place to bridge the gap between technology and agriculture, it will be looking for those investors who are local because it's important that we actually build and support our own. Mm, right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, so yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, I guess we know that in Ghana, most of our farmers are not educated. In trying to bring up these agri technologies in place, will there be any form of education that is going to be given to the farmers to be able to embrace this as a change? Absolutely. I, I think that there's a need for the people to, to be educated. They don't need to know in depth, but they need to know the basics of what they're doing. And I think the basics for what they do right now is that they know the planting season, they know what kind of seeds, they know how to maintain their farmlands. And they also know that in in planting that you, you don't necessarily have to, you know, throw all your crops in a shattered way. They already know the processing. So it is... The, like, I, like I explained to the agri-tech, it is the our manager or the farm manager, as it's usually called, that comes into the picture to meet halfway the farmer and the investor as well. It's the farm manager that, is, that manages the whole thing so that everyone's expectations to are met and it's a win-win situation. Did that answer your question? Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions? Question, Marie, final or oh, someone is going to go ahead. Oh, my question is about the Ghana Agri Tech. And it is on the back of the last question that is key, that agriculture, most farmers are illiterate. And agriculture and farming is kind of viewed as something for people who are illiterate. How do you think, what, sorry, what do you think the government can do to remove, remove, this, remove this opinion? How do you think the government can incentivize young people coming out of school to take on agriculture as a, a trade or a business? You know, what do you think the government can do to incentivize? Thank you, Mr. In, in terms of what the government can do, I, I think there's a whole lot that needs to be put into agriculture. Like I said when I sh at my intro, the only thing I remember from agriculture back in school is the land use degree, which basically just talks about what the government does for lands that are in the state and lands that are in the local government. And it's sad because I'm sure this is the truth for other young people like myself. I think there should be more practicals because you're, we go to school because we want to be able to apply. We don't go to school because we want to be able to read the history or read the theory, right? So if we are not able to apply what we learn, then it's a big deal. And then, of course, there's the need for farming to be made 
you know, very lucrative that people, young people like you and I can understand and believe that there's hope for them in this field. Imagine Sweden at the moment, they, they, they found better ways of using technology to be able to map out areas in terms of GIS, which is geographic information, in terms of GIS to map out areas that maybe this is a part of the land that needs more fertilizer, or this is a part of the land that needs more water for irrigation, or this is the part of the land that the crops are not doing so well and we need to focus. Imagine if you had a very vast land and you have to do everything manually. I think that's where young people think that I can't be doing this, I can't be caught doing this. But I know for a fact that with farming, there's, there's, a, large, there's a large space for you to be able to grow and try if it's done in a mechanized way. Then you don't see the need for you to go pick up a hoe and you know do as long as it's a tractor that you can drive to from that land and then it can do all of that. Then I'm sure young people will begin to see it as a business and a space for them to be able to try it. Yeah, Mitre, did Thank I answer you. your question? Thank you. Very complimentary. Thank you. Okay, timer. How am I doing for time? How am I doing for time? Timer? 90 minutes, 41 seconds. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I love speaking to you guys about architect today. I hope that we as young people can begin to look for ways where we can become actors on this field of achieve, achieving the agenda as individuals and as a nation together. Thank you so much. Over to you, Madam Postmaster. Thank you very much, Maureen. Indeed, technology is now the subject matter for the day, and if we able to embrace this into the agriculture field, we're looking forward to having a very great nation. The second speaker for today is Salasi Akpaho. He is a geospatial and a data scientist whose insights plays a critical role in decision-making processes. He is a static and lateral thinker and passionate about deep learning, leadership, management, creativity, spirituality, and development. Selassie believes in the power of human mind and seeks opportunities that develop great innova innovations. He is delivering a speech on following the pathway, which is part of the innovation path, pathway project. He's currently on level two, project three. Selassie is a great person and we're all looking forward to hearing from him. Selassie, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Good evening. So, uh, okay. Ever since I could read, I've been quite passionate about the stories of the Greeks and then their mythology. And one thing I've come to realize is that for each of them, there were gods and mentors that took them throughout their life, guiding them in what they were to do. Uh, just to draw your mind some of them. I hope some of you have heard about Achilles, Hercules, uh, Paris, uh, the Trojan War, and other. Now, in all those situations, there were people that guided these heroes or even the villains in what they wanted to be at the end of the day. So my journey of being mentored or being a prodigy somehow started in 2015 when I, had, when I wanted to become a project manager. Now, getting into the whole field of international relations and community projects was quite confusing. Because I've already read a lot about projects as well as that way, and there is no clear guiding line on the line should be drawn or where you should start from. So, luckily for me, just like Paris from the Trojan War, I had three mentors or three goddesses that I said came into my came into my life at that point in time. The first one knew about finance management, the second, international relations and community projection management, and the third, organizational management. 
unlike Paris, I had to do what would help me get through it all. And looking at all three of them, there were things, the elements they knew that I could learn from. Now, before I started that journey, I have read somewhere that a mentor is not necessarily someone who shows you what to see, but then just points in the direction and asks you to explore and look for yourself what you wanted to see. So coming in contact with these people, my whole experience was not about what they were telling me to do and where exactly they were pointing me and what lessons they were trying to make me learn. So let me start with my the one on organizational development. She goes like, here, set up a team, engage with them, try to learn with them. Don't try to be the boss, just try to flow with them. So I got in touch with a team. I created a team of five people. I, uh, I tried engaging with them, bringing our workflow into not I'm on top, you are under, no. But then let's see, what activities can I handle? What activities can you handle? In doing this, I learned that team management or being a team leader is not about being on top, but being able to identify what tax each person is good at and then engaging with them on that. And in so doing, you as a team leader also have to play a supporting role for all of them. My second trainer, who was in finance, was very good with accounting books. Trust me. She takes a book, she can do forensics, auditing, whatever the financial term is. She knows how to do it. And now, I'm going to project management. I knew that finance was one of the major key stakeholders or key components of managing a project. So I asked, what can I learn from you? She gave me an Excel sheet and told me to analyze and come up with the results of what I think was wrong with it. I scrolled through, scrolled through. The first week, I found nothing. The second week, I found nothing. But then the third week, while I was going through, I realized that there was a hidden sheet that was actually controlling the entire component of all the other uh, files. So once I opened that sheet, I realized that I had a breakdown of what's connected what to what and what was the summary of what this sheet was trying to get to. In doing that, I learned that finance comes from a flow. First, looking at what people do with the money, looking at what is very essential to the project, and looking at them many miscellaneous activities that most project managements do not factor, but then are uh, uh, activities that cost a lot when it comes to project management. Now, my third trainer, or my third mentor, or my colleagues, was international relations and community project management. From here, ask them on what it is to run a project that is relevant to the community or to whomever you are trying to engage with. In doing this, I also had to deal with uh, or engage with people from different backgrounds, different cultures, and different nationalities. Some have very unique perspectives of how staff are supposed to be. Some are very agile but afraid of animals. Uh, Everyone has a, their whole unique way of coming on, on board and engaging with you on a project. So from here, being uh, someone who is into uh, community project management, I learned how to create sustainable projects that are more valuable to the community than just something that you feel is a general flow of how staff are supposed to be. In addition to that, I learned something that was very critical to every project which is standards and satisfaction. How do you define the standards of the project and how do you determine whether your customers are satisfied? First, there are laid down rules on what exactly everyone wants from the project. To me, as the one uh, handling the project, I would my just be looking at my key indicators of what are my deliverables for the day. To the one who is causing the project, his mind is looking at how much cost is going into the project and what exactly I'm using his money for? Is it relevant to him making profit at the end of the day? Now, whom the project is for? What's the community we are driven to? What, how relevant is it to them? Do they want a school instead of a toilet? Or would they prefer a hospital to a church facility? Now, this, are, this has been my journey in 2015 of learning how to be a project manager and the key learnings I've learned throughout that journey. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Selassie. 
I guess we all have Salasi's intro, and in Glenn's presentation, really tells us who indeed Salasi is and what he's very passionate about. Thank you for the great work done, Salasi. Our next speaker is Grace Adiapena, who is a ex VP membership. And today, she is going to deliver a presentation as part of her presentation mystery pathway. Grace joins Toastmasters because she wanted to be a better communicator. She works with classic class media group. She likes to meet and interact with people, which I can confirm to that. She sees every challenge as an opportunity to learn. Grace, the floor is yours. We look forward to hearing from you as you deliver on your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Can you recall how last year ended for you? I remember how excited I was during the first what I said. I adorned myself in white, looking all excited. 2020 was going to be a great year. I had so much expectation. All too soon, it was over. Later that day, I had a call from my best friend. That day, I'm preparing for your wedding. I want to come, and when I come, I thought of the, that last discussion we had. I want to say, I will say in Ghana. That was good news. After a few months, she actually moved to Ghana to stay. She, she secured the place and started running her own business. On a spur of moment, she fell sick and was diagnosed with pneumonia. To make the matters worse, she was coughing. It wasn't comfortable around her at all. Could it be COVID-19? I had no choice to stay away from her. She had to be quarantined at the hospital for two weeks before she was later transferred to the main ward when they confirmed it wasn't COVID-19. Her family wanted her to return so badly, but the, the president had announced the lockdown. The cases of COVID-19 kept rising every day, so visiting the hospital was even risky, but I had to. After a series of tests, she was diagnosed with a trial misoma. There was a tumor in her heart that had blocked her valve. According to the doctors, we had to raise $10,000 for her surgery, and it had to be done as soon as possible. Raising $10,000 during lockdown. She just buried her dad six months ago. This was a big blow for the family. A few weeks, we all rallied around and raised $5,000 the doctors to start the surgery because she kept deteriorating by the day. But the doctors refused to perform the surgery. The last person was made. I could feel her agony. Sometimes I felt so helpless seeing her go through so much pain. At night when the crisis was so severe, all I could do was hold her hand, pray with her, and stroke her till she falls asleep. In all this, she kept promising me that she would keep fighting and get well, so we planned my wedding. She had already bought her gown. I knew she was going to get well very soon. Her family finally raised the extra 5000 and added to the money so the surgery can be performed as soon as possible. That day, I was so thrilled. We quickly met the surgeons and paid all $10,000. They agreed to perform the surgery in the next four days. She had been complaining for the past few days. She was so tired. So I quickly went to her ward and assured her that she was going to be fine very soon. I needed her to hold on. The next morning, I got to the hospital and she was covered with a white cloth. I was, she had breakfast in the morning and she kept saying she wanted to rest. And that was it. I said, well, 
If she's resting, then it's time to wake up. I took off the clothes. I shook her. I called her over and over and over. She was speechless. She was my best friend. She was going to be my bridesmaid. She was my personal person. She was gone. She died. She gave up on me. After all this, I shut down. I wasn't interested in anything anymore because I was so weary. I kept trying to go to see me too. And finally, I had to even call off the wedding because of personal reasons. Everything kept happening around the same time. And I thought to myself, if only I can press a button to delete 2020, I would. I was pretending to be fine. I went to work. I did my job. I smiled. People kept telling me, oh, you are so strong. But deep down, I was so depressed. I would sometimes sit at the office till 12 a.m. before I start heading home. Because I didn't even want to stay home. I wasn't interested in anything. There were several times I tried to write my speech and start and, and, and prepare and, and I wanted to write my, my script and, and prepare for a speech, but I wasn't interested. Finally, I sat down one day and thought to myself, what if, why am I giving my energy to the past whilst I'm still alive? I was awake. I, I, I was, I was, it was a wake up call for me because I had, it, it seemed I had been in the dark for long. There has been a brighter side of all this. Why am, why, why am I not seeing it? My friend contacted coronavirus during the back and forth at the hospital and that complicated her illness, which caused her to have a heart attack, according to the autopsy report. Why didn't I get the virus? Because I was with her throughout. That was the brighter side of it. What happened to my friend could have happened to me, but I lived the brighter side. If I had gone on with the marriage, would I have been happy in the long run? No. People lost their jobs during the lockdown, but they still have my job, the brighter side. This was a turning point for me. The things that I thought it was too late for me to do, now I can say boldly, I'm almost done. In all, in everything, we always have to look at the other side of the coin. And so on 31st December, if I'm alive, I will adorn myself in white and jubilate because I'm still standing, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Grace. Indeed, the brighter side. And we're looking forward to 31st December, where we'll be seeing a more brighter side of 2020. I would plead with all of us currently to unmute our mics and clap for all the prepared speeches, all those who delivered prepared speeches for today. Indeed, COVID-19 has imparted a lot on us, and yet, day by day, week by week, we are available to sit and prepare and deliver for the speeches. Please, let's clap for all the people who have delivered speeches for today. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you, Grace, for the wonderful presentation. At this moment, I would like to call on the timer who would be sharing with us how well we did with our timing for today. As we all know, timing is very critical for all Toastmasters, and we need to ensure that as Toastmasters, wherever we find ourselves, we are able to deliver within the time allocated to us. So I will invite our timer for today, Sheila, to share with us how well we have done. Thank you, Nenea. Uh, Maureen spoke for 19 minutes, 54 seconds. Selani spoke for 6 minutes, 26 seconds. And Grace spoke for 7 minutes, 3 seconds. 
all the stickers are eligible for voting, qualifying and are eligible for voting. So we did pretty well with the time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shla. We will now move into our table topic section. And as we all know, as part of the um, Toastmasters meeting, table topic section is a time where we deliver all prepared speeches. And I encourage all guests on this platform today to avail themselves to join in the table topic section. But whilst we go along with the table topic session, I will also encourage Peter to share with us, to start sharing the link for the ballots so that that will also be done alongside and we don't waste much time. So we have Emmanuel Mumuni, who is currently a president for Busy Speakers Toastmasters Club, who will be leading the table topic section for today. Emmanuel, we are prepared for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nanoya. So you are prepared for unprepared speeches. That's that's very interesting. So like Nanoya said, this is the session where we try to build our capacity in being able to speak on our feet. And as leaders, what we would realize is that these these speeches would contribute majority of the speeches that would, would be given throughout our lifetime because most of the times you don't have the time to prepare a week or two or even a month before many of the speeches that people would invite you to speak. And once they know that you are a part of Toastmasters, they expect you to do wonders at every event. And so when they see this term, Harriet, or say them in, in the crowd, they wanted to say one or two things. They, they don't care if Adam Harriet prepared or not. They just feel like you should be the best of yourself. So the question is really how do you how do you get ready when you are not ready? And it's the trick is not to to know everything, but just to be calm and know how to order your steps or your, your thoughts in a way that communicates an idea. So one of the ways you do that is to 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 have a, a an introduction, to have a body, and then you sum up in the conclusion. So this is one one good way of speaking when you are not so prepared. In the in the spirit of our of our team today, which is cultivating your imagination, I want to test our level of imagination, and I have a few questions that I'll be I'll be advancing to some of you. And my expectation is for you to use your own imagination to come up with something that that feels like a story out of a picture that I'll be showing to you. So at this point, I would like to to welcome four or five volunteers, and you can either raise your your hand or you unmute your mic and just say your name. Okay, Ivo has has volunteered already. I need four more if I can get this. So uh, you can unmute your mic and just say your name or raise your hand like people have done or type in the in the comment section. So let me populate the names. I have Evo. Who else? Harriet. Jim Harriet Ose. <laughs> you know I was, I was going to mention your name already, so this well. <laughs> volunteer. Who else? Carl? I see Carl, I see Isaac Poku, I see Kojo, Dr. Kojo. <laughs> I see Peter. Peter, I haven't heard your voice in a long time, so please let us hear your voice. Salasi, Shela. And then someone called Tech. Okay, so cars. Volunteer. Two more people. Okay, so I'll add Dr. Dr. Kojusni. It feels like he wants to unmute his mic and, and volunteer himself. I just wait for him. Um, Dr. Kojusni. 
Hi. I'm not in the at the moment. My best, but I'm driving. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. That's the best time you can you can learn how to do important speeches. Final name. No. Daniel, can you participate in the table topics? Okay, so I've been here Hello. from Hello. Daniel. Peter. Peter. Hello. Peter. Yes. Hello, I'm here, Daniel. Okay, are you? Are you? Are you available to try in table, table topics? That's fine. Okay. Awesome. So I have a, a few papers that I will be sharing on the screen for all of you to see. And your your main the expectation is that you make meaning out of this picture. You can create the story if you want, but just tell us something that rings in your head. Let your imagination speak to us. So the first person that I would like to call on is Ivo. Ivo, the your picture is loading now. I am waiting. So seeing you. Can you see the picture? Not yet. To me, your screen went on black. Okay. So it went from your face to now a black screen. I do not see a picture yet. Ah, there we are. Okay. So take it away. Well, thank you very much for this opportunity to react to a bustling, lively marketplace outside, likely here in Accra. First of all, of course, I see short sleeves that people are wearing, so my goodness, it must be a lot warmer and nicer over there than where I am. And let me believe that this picture was taken before the 13th of March this year. Because then, with pleasure, I shall join the people in the marketplace and make certain that the people that I meet will have a good time as thinking back about the time before the 13th of March, I'll be happy to left and right buy some things of the people that they are there. That's what they call impulse buying. I will do that because if everything looks so nice outside and we're having a good time, then I should spend some money and not have a good time on my own. Allow people to feel the good side of trading and that they went out today to trade <coughs> without a reason. Thank you very much, dear Table Topics Master. Thank you so much, Ivo. I I did not see see your meaning coming. I thought you would have taken it from another angle, but it's really nice to see how big you imagine things. So thanks, thanks, thanks again for participating. I would move on to DTM Aretose, and your picture is coming up. Can you see now? No, please. Okay. So 
I suppose this is one of pictures that we would dream ever have, a picture of the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth. And I believe at the time, Kwame Nkrumah was president of Ghana. It could be a state event, most likely, receiving the Queen. And he was having a good conversation at time with her. I believe he was telling her how happy the people are, and the queen was equally amazed at how colorful the Ghanaians had dressed. I'm sure the, the, the music, everything was... Kind of, this kind of scene in a picture could happen to me one day. I look forward to having a good picture with the world leader, when I have achieved something I really worked out for, and possibly not just for personal gain, but also for um, interest. Thank you so much, DTM, for taking us on that journey. Next, we have Carl. Oh, please tell me when you see the picture. Okay. <laughs> we are four gentlemen. We made rounds throughout the world during a time where there's a lot of chaos, lots of suffering, a lot of dying, and a lot of uncertainty. We made rounds for very not of not so obvious reasons. And then there's a time someone sent me a WhatsApp message and asked me to go onto the speakers or the GRFs and type in Ghana. When I typed in Ghana, I saw these four gentlemen, poor bearers, carrying coffins, I suppose, which had lifeless twists of human beings and dancing away their sorrows or the sorrows of the family that had lost these loved ones. In another sense, I thought about the fact that it was not necessarily a celebration of their death, but a time for people in the family to reflect on the contributions that those people who had died made on their lives and them have a better life because of the fact that they were alive. So if I should look back at this picture five years from now, I was smart because it made Diana popular, even to the point that Donald Trump tweeted a picture of the same thing against Joe Biden. It put us on the map, and now I'm thinking about cultivating my imagination for how we can use this even to our advantage as a country. What's the success master? Awesome. Carl, thank, thanks so much for the story. Dr. Koji, I would skip you because you are driving and you might not be able to see the picture. Let me know if you are still able to do it. But if I would move on to Daniel. And Daniel, just let me know when you can see the picture that is coming up in a few seconds. <laughs> Are you showing the picture? Yes, you should see it in You should see it now. No, it's not showing yet.
Can anyone else see the pictures? I, I, or it's just me? Okay. I think I can see it now. Can I go now? Can I stand now? Yes. Go ahead. Thank you. I love pictures. I love pictures because it tells a story. Pictures always tell a story. Now, in this picture, you can see six beautiful ladies. And then by their skin color and hair, you can tell that even though they're light skin, they're definitely African. Also, they are in beautiful Kente clothing, which shows their Africanness, aside the fact that they are African by blood. This picture looks really like it was taken in Ghana during the year of return because I can see people enjoying behind them and I can see the way they are excited. It shows they are excited to be in the motherland. They are excited to be in Ghana. You can also tell from the way they are positioned that they are looking forward to a very beautiful picture and exactly as the picture turned out, it looks pretty, it looks splendid, it looks beautiful. Like I said earlier, I love pictures because they definitely tell a story. And just, just as you can see, this picture is telling all of us a story. Just as I've told you what the picture means to me, I'm sure every single person on this call has a meaning or has derived from this picture. And that is why I love pictures, because they tell a story. Thank you. Over to you. Top, table topic, Master. Thank you so much, Daniel, for that wonderful account of the picture that was just shown to you. Finally, we go to the amazing Peter. Peter, let me know when you see the next picture. So it's loading now. You should see it in a few minutes. I can see it now. Go ahead, Peter. Okay. So, welcome to the show in La Paz. The show that everyone loves to watch every Friday. So, here are contestants who have begun. And at the moment, we can't tell who is winning because they're all excited. We can see the very last person at the back who is comfortably walking because he's realizing that all his friends have beat him to it. By the way, why are the gentlemen topless and the lady not topless? Well, that's a question for another day. But this game is a game that we all love. We've all practiced one way or the other during our childhood. And for me personally, seeing this, I there are so many memories that I'm having. This can be done almost anywhere, if especially when you're in a compound house and you have lots of friends around. Once you get your clothes around your waist, you will see the next child from the next door looking at you, looking at the mom, and the mom will be telling him, hey, don't try that. But you know, as a child, you have to play this. You have to go on the field and have fun. So if you've not yet had fun yet, you can try this. Adults too can try anyway. We've all been children before. So who do you think will win this particular race? Is it a lady in the one who can take? Or a gentleman at the back has already given up? Well, over to you, Mr. Table Topics Master. Thank you so much, Peter, for painting another picture out of the picture that was shown on you. It's really very nice, very nice to describe. And I'd like to thank all our, our contestants or our participants of today's table topics, Ivor, DTM, 
I say Carl, Daniel, and Peter for availing yourselves to be part of this amazing part of the team. I think it's it's very interesting to engage with topics because you never know what's coming up and you get to test your creativity and how well you can you can uh, move move without without being prepared. So I would ha- like to hand over to the Toastman of the day, Madam Nanaya, as she takes us to the throughout the rest of the program. Thank you. Yes, Peter. I'm sorry. Yes, no, I can hear you. Okay. Thank you. Now, yeah. me, I, no. All right. So we'll just move along. Um, the next session will call on the evaluate the general evaluator to introduce the evaluators for today's meeting. Isaac, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you very much. We've gone to we've gotten to an interesting part of our meeting, and it's the time for our speeches to be evaluated. They said feedback is the breakfast of champions. So our first evaluator is Peter Nyakodankwa. Peter loves to live once. He's a humanist. He. He's a skeptic, he's a magician, he loves to engage his mind in productive ventures. He loves solving the Rubeskin, Rubes Cube, and learning new things. So would welcome Peter to evaluate Maureen. Peter, over to you. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. I'm glad you didn't break your your teeth trying uh, to pronounce my <laughs> object. Yeah, your cubes. <laughs> great. Great. Great, great. If if you just tuned in, I'm evaluating our first speaker, Maureen, who did a project with the question and answer session. The purpose of this project was to learn about and practice facilitating a question and answer session. She was supposed to give us some information, and based on that information, the audience would ask her some questions. So the first question to ask is, did she provide enough information? I would say yes. And also, during the question and answer, she provided even more information. But I also want to congratulate Maureen on one thing I've noticed with your delivery. You always have a very conducive environment in the sense of lighting and all that, which I think always en- enhances your delivery always. Your introduction was perfect, but I want to dwell on the question and answer session. I noticed a couple of things. The first thing was that when you a question was asked and you gave the answer, in trying to clarify if the 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 person in question had understood or was satisfied with your answer. You use a particular statement, I don't know if I answered your question. That was for Emmanuel. And the same thing happened with, I think, Nanaya, but you phrased it as you actually asked, did I answer your question and gave some time for her to give the response. Usually during Q&A, it's important to understand that there's a question and there's an answer. Therefore, if you're given an answer, I want to clarify if your, your answer has gone down. You need to take time to listen to the of the other person rather than moving on straight away. Secondly, I think the, the, the demographic of your speech was a bit um, hard to bottom down in the sense of 
I think you, you, you mentioned something about local government with the agri-tech trying to um, support. Now, do your, your Q&A, especially with the, the your, with your speech, you need to understand the, the demographic of the audience. So our government, so as, as far as I know, Nigeria, but here's the case that you are, your audience chiefly is made up of Ghanaians. So I think you could have also looked at that. But all you know, I'll say that you answer the questions very well, which show that you had um, enough information and you knew what you were about. So congratulations on your Q&A and hope to hear you some other time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Peter. Okay, so our next evaluator is Daniel Tete. Daniel Tete is the president of Access Bank Toastmasters Club. He believes that by determining to leave a mark in every environment, we will find ourselves. We all have the ability to make this world a better place. Let's welcome Daniel Tete as he evaluates the second speech. Thank you very much, General Evaluator. Hello, Salasi. Hello, Selassie. Yeah. Daniel. Okay. I wanted to find out yeah. on the phone call before I, I proceed with my evaluation. Uh, yeah, I'm over here. Okay. Thank you. So let's see. Once again, congrats on, or congratulations on your delivering your speech. For the purpose of or the benefit of those who are on call, I want to go through over the purpose of your speech of your speech of the speech. The purpose of this project was for you to clearly define how Toastmasters environs envision sorry envisions mentoring. Also, it was for you to share some aspects of your previous experience at the division. All you're supposed to do was to deliver a speech telling us on your previous mentoring experience. And then I think you did great. It was a very enthralling, uh, enthralling speech. You told us what about your mentoring experience where you mentioned your three men mentors. And you told us what each and every one does for you. There's one person that checks or help, helps you with your organization, another person with your with accounting, and another person with international relations, if I got that right, yes. So it was a very interesting to be, I was able to follow, I was able to understand what you're saying, and then get feedback in terms of how your mentors treat you, the kind of benefits you derive from them. So for me, you actually met the purpose of the speech. What I think you can work on is you can do better with your gestures. At some point, it felt like you're playing with your fingers. I, I And then also, because your video was delaying, I don't know whether it had to, that's how come I, I, I thought you were playing with your fingers. But that's the feedback I got from, the, from your speech. Also, what I think you can do is that I think you can practice standing while delivering a speech. Because at some point, I felt... I didn't feel the energy, so I felt drained. And I'm sure most of people, of course, who didn't, at some point, lost, were, 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 were down because they couldn't derive energy from your speech. Sometimes when you're speaking, you need to transfer energy from your speech to others such that people can feel the speech you're delivering. It would work better if we're a fiscal meeting because then people can see you. But on a virtual meeting, it's actually harder to do. So it's, it's better if you are standing and then connecting with the audience. That way it helps you as compared to you sitting. The other thing, the thing you can do also is that work on your gestures in terms of using them purposely. 
So use more gestures, but use them because so that your hands are not all over the place. And try not to always collapse your fingers. You didn't collapse it, but you kept on pressing and at some point playing with it. I don't know whether that was the extension or not, but you can, I want to work on that too. Aside that, I think it was a very great speech. I learned from you, and then I'm sure the people, all the other, all the other people on the call, so learned from what you had to share about the mentors. Thank you very much, and congratulations once again. Thank you, Daniel. So our next um, evaluator is Gabriela Aqua. She's a physiotherapist. She loves reading and watching movies. Her role model is Serena Williams. Her favorite quote is, I don't like to lose you at any time. Yet I've grown most of not, most not from victories, but setbacks. If winning is God's reward, then losing is how he teaches us. Let's welcome Gabriella as she evaluates our third speaker. Take it away, Gabriella. Thank you very much, Mr. General Evaluator. Congratulations, Grace Adiev, on your level three, project one. The brighter side. I must say that was a very enthralling speech. I love and was the speech, and I forgot how to it, but was What are your speech? Sorry, call question. Also, call the attention of this with a personal experience which was one to be commended. This experience was one that touched my heart. You lost a dear friend of yours, a best friend, who came down to be your best, your bridesmaid, but happened to lose her life family somehow. I like to say that's my condolence on that. Your passing with a series of events was one it was a very good one. You said how everything happened, and you were able to tell your story smoothly. That's a massive congratulations on. You also did very well with the clear, the clarity of all the series of events, and were able to follow through smoothly. The purpose of your speech was for us to know that you were aware of your thoughts and feelings, and also help you to also be aware of how your response to an event or an accident affects or impacts others around you. Your content, the story content was able to tell us that because you lost a friend, but then you were able to go back to work strongly and then you were able to turn back to your previous life without any difficulty. This is one real good thing and you were able to achieve the purpose of this speech. However, there were some two technical parts I want I think you could improve on. With the purpose of a speech being that you should be aware of your thoughts and your feelings, I think you could have done this better with your vocal variety and your gestures. If you stood, I think that would have helped us, that would have helped you demonstrating more of your gestures and then your body language. This would have made your speech rather powerful. Also, you gave us two emotions, one a very sad one, then the brighter side where you were able to get back to life. You were grateful for your life and that you didn't contract a virus or anything. In doing that, you could have gone like, I thank God very much that nothing happened I'm still alive. I still have my my job. That way, we would have seen the joy and excitement at the brighter side you were looking at. So, all in all, I'll say you did a very good job with this speech. You were clear. You said, my experience, which was very enthralling. 
your transitions were very good and you were very and you were captivating. But you could work on your gestures and your vocal variety to make the speech stronger. Thank you very much. Over to you, Dana Evaluator. Thank you very much. That was an enthralling section of very insightful evaluations. I hope the players are putting down their reports, the timer, the grammarian, the hour counter are getting their reports ready. I'd like to call on Carl. If Carl is available. Yes. Thank you very much. Mr. General Evaluator, please, you can call on your role players to give their reports. Their reports, okay. So is, is the timer ready? Yes, to give? I'm ready. Okay, so take it away then. Awesome. So for the table topic section, Evo spoke for one minute, 33 seconds. Harriet spoke for one minute, 15 seconds. Carl spoke for one minute, 42 seconds. Daniel spoke for one minute, 26 seconds. And Peter spoke for one minute, 52 seconds. So they all qualify to be voted for. For the evaluation session, Peter spoke for three minutes, 13 seconds. Daniel spoke for three minutes, 43 seconds. And Gabriella Gabriella spoke for three minutes, 41 seconds. Based on this, uh, I need to clarify from Carl, though. Does Daniel and Gabriel qualify to be voted for? Because they went over the great period of 30 seconds. Sorry? So they, they, they did not qualify. They do not qualify. So Peter is the only one that qualified to be voted for. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I had some connectivity issues, so I had to go off. But Isaac, please continue with your team. Okay, so we'd like to call the grammarian to, to bring a report. Thank you, Isaac. The word of the day, enthralling, was used by Daniel, Gabriela, Isaac, and Carl also made use of it in our meeting chats. Kudos to all of you for making use of the word of the day. Then we also had some words, though familiar, but but they are they they sounded unique in the speeches which were delivered. Maureen made use of the word lucrative. Salasi used agile. Then Grace used fill. Reporting on the use of filler words, Sheila used um twice. Nanaya used um uh, twice. Maureen used like I said repeatedly, which I felt she could have done better. Emmanuel made use of the word so repeatedly. Selassie made use of the words er uh, and so repeatedly so much in his speech. I think Selassie, you have to work on that. And Peter also made use of the word um and so repeatedly. Thank you. Isaac. Thank you, Ru, players. You've done a very good job. I'd like to ask um, our Toastmaster, Toast, our Madam Toastmaster, Nanaya, 
Yes, I see. Can you take it away or do I um, have to give... Can you finish with your report? Then I should finish with my yeah. report. Then. Yes. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so the meeting started on time, started on time, but I think we're having a few technical problems. On my side, I was really having some challenges connecting, and I think maybe we could work on that. Also, I also think that all the people who were giving speeches were introduced properly. The toast... Nanaya did a great job of introducing everyone properly, and I think you did a great job. And also, the role players, I'd like to commend all the role players for doing a great job, making it look so effortless, but it really takes a lot of energy to do that. So I'd like to say great job to all the role players. And also the evaluators, you did a fantastic job because the speeches were also fantastic. So thumbs up to everybody. In general, we had a good meeting and a little, a little technical problems which we could work on later. So that'll be my evaluation for today. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Isaac, for the good work done. And thanks to all those who participated in the table topic section. And to DTM Hyret, Richard Wagner once said, imagination creates reality. So I heard you deliver your speech and you were hoping to also take a picture with the Queen once in your lifetime. We pray that it will become a reality. And to all fellow Toastmasters, whatever that we imagine, we should always remember that we will be able to create some reality or make some, let, it, let the dream happen. So let's not forget as we go along throughout the whole week to make sure that we keep imagining things. Before I hand over to the president of the day, Peter has already shared the link for balloting with us. Let's all try to ballot for those who qualified to be balloted for. And again, it's time for us to renew our dues. And some of us have still not been able to do so. We have just three days to do so. Currently, we have 13 people who have renewed their membership. We have minimum seven people to go. And considering the total number of people we have, I believe we can even get extra 10 or more than 10 people who can easily renew their membership for us to be able to achieve our goal. We have done so well and I'm so proud to be a member of Busy Speakers and I encourage all of us to be able to do that in three days. So just waiting for the surprises. But if you are getting value for what you are paying for, we will not be begging for people to renew. As you renew your membership, please let's, and let's ensure that we enroll on any of the pathways to be able to deliver speeches and develop ourselves. When we are getting value in return for the money that we are paying, definitely, even if it's not time, I'm sure you'll be calling Anaya, my news is ready, my news is ready. Looking forward to the time where people will be calling me, Nanaya, my news is ready. And that will only be possible when we utilize the platform that we have. And I know we are definitely going to get there. On that note, I would like to say a very big thank you for serving you as your Toastmaster for the day. It's been a pleasure doing that. And I would like to hand over to our President, Emmanuel. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Nanaya, for taking us through this meeting. It was good to have you and to see you bring on your expertise and make this meeting a success. I'm really proud of the work that you're doing, not only as the 
the Christmas of the day for today, but also supporting the club in getting all our renewals done. And you said it all that we need to be more serious about getting the value that we uh, that we can get from Toastmasters because once we we see and we receive this value then it wouldn't be a big deal to renew and it has always been an issue of whether the money you are paying is worth the value I get and there's no doubt there's a there's there's a super abnormal value with regards to how much you're paying. There are, there are lots of leadership and communication programs that you need to pay way, way more and you never get the practicality that Toastmasters brings to you. So let's all be encouraged to go ahead and, and pay our dues because that's what the, the club is, is, is run on. And I think we've made a huge, a huge pro, uh, we've made huge progress in the last week. Uh, all thanks to executives and some members who have taken up the role. We've had so many people uh, renew, which is really, really positive. And these are, uh, we are in the fi- final days. And I know busy speakers, we always pull through. Usually halfway through renewal period, you have low numbers, but the last minute, you have many more people uh, committing to that. And I know it's not an easy time as well to get the kind of money and commit it to Toastmasters. It's not an easy time for a lot of people. But again, there's a lot of value in Toastmasters and you should be able to comment to this. And I think Nanaya is also open to discussions. If you have any personal discussion to have with her, she can always uh, engage with you to see how we can we can you know maneuver our way around it. Because we are a family and we are a club that cares a lot of our members and we know it's not the same for everyone. So we should be able to have individual or bilateral conversations to get the numbers going high. I think today was a great meeting. I love the work that I did when taking us through the meeting. The role players were on point. Speeches was really, really educational, not to mention entertaining as well. Thanks to all the speakers for coming on board. I don't know if Peter is ready with the results of today's meeting. Peter, do we have any? I'm ready. Peter is ready. So yes, Peter, the I, results I, are in. Okay. Great, great, great. Let's get ready to roll. No. So we'll start with the prepared speakers. Who do you think won? Any guesses? Who do you think won? <laughs> well, it goes to the lady who made us a bit sad, but also made us enjoy the speech. Grace Abdiye Fena. Ah, the amazing Grace. Well, to Christine, we have a tie between her. Peter, say that again. Interesting. So I'm guessing maybe Daniel will share some of the 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 ladies with Carl and Carl will also do the same. So for table topics we have a tie. That's what you're saying. Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. Then for the volunteer driving, I have to comment on it. Because by disqualification, it goes to myself. So I don't think I can announce that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's the results for okay, this. Okay, okay. Thank, you, thank you so much, sir, for putting this together. You, you usually set up this, this link a few days before the, the the meetings, and I really appreciate your diligence and dedication on this. Thank you for everything. I would like to introduce any guests that we might have with us today. If you are visiting us for the very first time as a Toastmaster or not, please unmute your mic and tell us who you are and where you are joining us from. New members. No new member with us today. Okay. 
So we'll move on. Yes. So I think we we, we the, the meeting was really great. What we plan usually when you plan a meeting, it doesn't go as as you have on the the outline. But today was a very well executed meeting, and I'm really proud of everyone for joining. I would like to adjourn the meeting to the 11th of October when we return to continue with what we do best. Busy speakers, we we do our thing and we'd like to continue on this, this particular height and level. So thank you all for joining and I hope to have you all join in our next meeting. Let's keep in touch. We are always a call or a message away to learn about your experience and your, your concerns if there are any. And I wish you all a very good evening. Ciao. Bye. Make sure I'm, I'm not cut away. Okay, I hear DTM or says voice. <laughs> Isaac, you are um, you doing action. I hope you are doing Yeah, yeah. I'm doing great. Awesome. Sheila. Hi. How are you doing? When is your next your next speech? Yeah. <laughs> um, to me is your next meeting. I'm not sure if you've confirmed this. Sorry? Say Carl told me your next speech is at the next meeting. I just wanted to confirm. Yeah, I'm planning it. That's a yeah. very good, good start. <laughs> Thank you. All right, enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Nice. a great job. And I, uh, do we have some cake, some virtual cake? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, not at the moment.